July the 2nd, 1992, the unthinkable happened. The Great Northern Cod Fishery, the first of 14 East Coast ground fisheries, was closed to commercial harvest. A five centuries old tradition had come to an abrupt and devastating halt. Thousands of people were thrown out of work. Coastal communities and the people depending on these resources for their livelihood were numb with shock. Throughout the years of the moratoria, the fishery became more shellfish dependent. Our communities got smaller, the landscape of our province was irrevocably altered, and fisheries management was never again looked upon in the same way. The road back, the road to rebuilding fish stocks, has been a slow and oftentimes frustrating path. The loss of the cod fisheries resulted in many harvesters depending on new species, crab and shrimp, to make a living, to support their enterprises, families and communities. It also resulted in more involvement of harvesters in the science and management of fisheries resources. It's very clear since the moratorium that there's been a huge change, I think, in terms of the attitudes of fishermen. The devastation that it caused in the communities, I think it caused people to really refocus in terms of looking after the resource for the long term. If you look at lobster on the west coast and uh, the work that fishermen done there, you look at crab and the work that fishermen have, uh, have put in in trying to manage these uh, fisheries for the long term. They, the attitude is not just to look at it in terms of today, but to look at it in terms of what sort of resource are you going to have to pass to the, uh, to the next generation. After the anger, harvesters in many regions of our province, in conjunction with their union, fish, food and allied workers, decided that the way fisheries were managed had to change. They insisted on having a say, that their experience, their knowledge and expertise be used in the fishery science and management process, that they'd be at the decision-making table. They knew they had to become more than harvesters of the resource, they must also become the stewards of it. If we keep looking after it and uh, look after it for our children and our grandchildren, hopefully in the future it'll make a big difference to the communities. It started in 1993 with lobster harvesters on the west coast many of whom had also fished cod. They realized the closure of the cod fishery placed added pressure on the lobster resource, so they took a more active role in the conservation and protection of that resource through such measures as V-notching. So a lot of times you got to turn them over just to see, make sure they're V-notching up. People have to start looking after the resource, and I think it is, it's reality. they got no choice but, but do it. they got to look after it or else that's it, it's over, and then you gotta move away, your children gotta move away, and no one around here wants to go away. It was also natural that harvesters wanted to be part of the rebuilding of the cod stocks. This led to a cod sentinel program on the west coast, a program designed to give harvesters an opportunity to use their knowledge and experience of the sea and its resources in the assessment of cod stocks. The Sentinel Fishery started in, uh, in 1994. Uh, it came about as a result of the, uh, the cod moratorium in 1992. Basically, we lost um, uh, a whole range of scientific data that we collected from the commercial fishery. So Sentinel was developed to be sort of a model of the, of the uh, commercial fishery and recover some of that data loss. The program soon expanded to include the south and northeast coasts. By 1996, there were over 100 harvesters collecting, recording, and interpreting data, including the tagging, weighing, and measuring of cod. Their efforts have enhanced what is known about our cod stocks 
and have contributed to the reopening of the cod fisheries and in the ongoing dialogue about the health and abundance of these stocks. More than a decade later, the program continues to play a critical role in the assessment and management of cod stocks. The relationship between harvesters and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans has undergone a dramatic shift since the days before the moratoria. This partnership still has its challenges, but most agree working together is better than not. Without the start of the Sentinel program, I, I, I feel pretty strong that maybe we wouldn't have a, a commercial fishery like we got today in, in, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And in conjunction with DFO and uh, working together, and uh, I think, uh, you know, they've, uh, the, the, the results have, have uh, convinced the scientists to a degree that the fish, the cod, the cod are on the rebound. They're coming back, and I think the, the sentinel fisheries played a major role in that. The relationship has improved uh, a lot. Uh, you find uh, the scientists uh, and the fishermen more willing to get together. You find uh, the scientists on a number of occasions have come up, and you know they meet in the, in the halls with the fishermen, hear their stories. Uh, we didn't see that before. Listen to their concerns. Listen to what they say, what they're seeing out in the boats. While the Sentinel program has made a difference in what is known about our cod stocks, lobster harvesters have also pushed to be involved in the conservation and management of this species. Noting the extra pressure being placed on the lobster resource as a result of the cod moratoria, harvesters took matters into their own hands and voluntarily began a lobster V-notching program. To breathe again. Hey. So now anyone gets that lobster next year, they're going to have to put her back. It started on the west coast and soon spread to the Eastport Peninsula and Fortune Bay. In addition to V-notching the spawny female lobsters and returning them to the ocean, harvesters also proposed other conservation measures, including a maximum carapace size, no fishing on Sundays, fewer pots, and shorter seasons. I guess the first decline when we seen seen at the lobsters was uh, when they shut down the cod fishery. Uh, a few years, uh, probably two or three years after that, you could see a, a drastic decline in the lobsters, and uh, I guess that's what it was due to. It was the fishermen putting so much pressure, so much pressure on the on the lobster at the time because there was nothing else to go at, and. Uh, and gradually our lobsters come back. In the last, especially the last four or five years, we've seen a big improvement. You know, I see V-notching as a big factor into this. And since we started doing that, I mean, we're, we're our crew aboard our boat. I mean, we believe that that's, that's why the lobsters have come back. Harvesters have worked to have their actions and knowledge taken into account and used in the decision-making process regarding the assessment of fisheries resources. When this happens, harvesters have more confidence in the final decisions and there is more incentive to be stewards of the resource. On the Eastport Peninsula, harvesters built on the shared stewardship model. They worked closely with DFO and in addition to V-notching and using fewer pots, 